This is Scott Pringle with Jacobs, and I'm the project manager for the Regional Transit Feasibility Plan. This presentation will discuss the results of our first major milestone, the step one analysis dealing with premium regional transit connections in Tampa Bay. When building any new premium transit system, there are essentially three questions that have to be answered. First is, what is the project to be built? How is it funded? And then who is responsible for running it and maintaining it? Well, the Regional Transit Feasibility Plan's primary purpose will be to answer question number one. What is that project to be built? We are working routinely with staff from FDOT and HART, but every two months we're going to go to the Tampa Bay Transportation Management Area Leadership Group, or the TMA, to collect that consensus and get that guidance. And that's really sort of the body or group of individuals who represent the elected officials from all three metropolitan planning organizations for Pasco, Pinellas, and Hillsborough to give us that guidance, to provide us that input, to keep moving the plan forward. And we'll also routinely meet with representatives of each one of the three transit agency boards. Um, and this group is going to be called the Transit Coalition, which will meet quarterly. But realistically, uh, those meetings are going to be milestone-based. So as we accomplish some of these key milestones throughout the development of the plan, we'll be reporting back to the board members of each one of the three transit agencies. And of course, we're always going to be looking to reach out to the general public as a whole. Um, I do have a slide that will talk about the website for the plan, but there'll be a number of different opportunities which I'm about to discuss for public involvement. During the first year, we're going to focus on answering questions of where are the key connections, what can be operating on those key connections, or what can best serve those key connections, whether it's bus transit, rail transit, or something else. And then we're looking to identify how and when that, that project could be built. So we developed that draft implementation plan. It's been an entire year vetting that plan with the community throughout 2018, such that when we wrap up in October of 2018, we've got an implementation plan that has a significant amount of consensus and momentum built behind it. The first year, we have a number of different public outreach activities, everything from surveys to workshops. All these elements are outlined here for year one. Like I mentioned before, surveys, social media, community meetings, workshops, a number of different public agency meetings, which are all open to the public, stakeholder working groups, and honestly, all of these elements are open to the public. So a number of different opportunities to get involved in the development of the plan. And really, the best way to do that is to go to our website, which is tbregionaltransit.com. Right now, we've got a survey that's up on the website. Um, it's a general preference survey, um, and we're hearing things that, you know, the reason why people don't take transit today in Tampa Bay is because it doesn't get them to where they want to be, right? It, it doesn't get them to their jobs. It doesn't get them to the airport. And to be honest, these are very similar comments that we've heard over the past several years of why people in Tampa Bay don't take transit more than they do today. So there are three primary driving purposes for the plan that we're always going to circle back to and make sure that we're satisfied. The first is that we're looking for those projects that have the greatest ability or potential to compete for federal and state transit dollars. We're always going to be looking at the most forward-looking technology and making the best use of not just today's technology, but tomorrow's technology. And that's really going to come into play when we're talking about the what and how different transit modes could serve some of these key connections. And then number three, of course, we're always going to be looking at uh, connections or projects that best serve our region both today uh, and tomorrow uh, regarding both you know, job, job growth, population, current population, and future population growth. Regarding the federal process and being competitive for the federal process, it does take a little bit longer to get through the federal process to actually receive those dollars, which it can be difficult and it's highly competitive. But the point is, is that we want to make sure that we're complying with all available funding options that are out there today for our region, whether it's state 
or federal or private dollars, you know, the most important thing we can do is make sure that all options are open to us. The FTA evaluation criteria, which we're modeling a lot of this plan after, represents many, many decades of transit planning and implementation experience in our country. And they're very good criteria to pointing us in the right direction. This diagram illustrates how we will evaluate projects through each step of the process. During step one, we're taking all the information, all the projects that have been identified in the Long Range Transportation Plans by the area metropolitan planning organizations. And we're going to take those and identify the top five corridors or really connections. These maps show jobs and population expected in Tampa Bay by 2040. On the left are jobs, and on the right is population. And the darker the color, the denser the amount of jobs or population in that area. I want to reiterate, one of the main purposes of this plan is to find a project to compete effectively for federal funding. And the next series of slides shows the results of step one and how we're getting closer to finding that project. The important thing to note about the criteria listed above is that those in bold really represent the precursors to the FTA rating criteria. When you're looking at trips to activity centers, jobs and population per mile, opportunities for economic development or TOD policies that are on the ground today, these are really the, the basis or the fundamentals for developing ridership and finding high performing transit projects. The map shown here represents a total of 67 different connections all coming from long-range transportation plans that were adopted by area MPOs, which they themselves had a significant amount of public outreach associated with them. And it's a great starting point for our Step 1 analysis. After running the evaluation for Step 1, this is what we're finding. We are finding that some of the most competitive areas for federal funding are those blue lines, those thick blue lines, those top five connections are in the core areas of our urban area within Tampa Bay. However, there are multiple layers to actually making premium transit successful in our region. For example, you can't just have those blue lines in isolation and ex expect them to perform well. It really requires all of those critical regional connections shown in green to support that blue line, as well as making sure we have a very robust commuter services network that's supporting both those regional connections and what we're finding is the top five highest performing connections within the region, or the dark blue. So the top five performing connections are just that. They're connections between major destinations. And in reality, there may be several different projects or several different ways to actually make those connections. This is a matrix comparing the top five connections. To be in the top five, a connection had to at least rank as one of the top five in three different categories. For example, we had four connections that served three activity centers or more. So let's walk through each connection one by one. Uh, these, none of these are in any particular order. They're not ranked. Uh, these are just the top five as a group. West Road of Brandon is the first one we're discussing here. West Road of Brandon connection has been studied many times. It serves the activity centers and it serves a lot of trips uh, both today and in 2040. This is the data associated with the West Road of Brandon connection. Uh, again, you can see highlighted in yellow all the uh, data points which put it in, a, in, a, in the top performing category, but then all the other data points for the corridor as it compares to the, the rest of the lines on the map. The next is downtown Tampa to USF. Again, serves centers. It's been studied several times. It serves the trips to those activity centers. Plus, this one has a lot of density of population within a half mile of the corridor, uh, both in 2010 and 2040. Again, here is the data associated with that. You can see most studied, the activity centers, the amount of trip activity it serves as well as the population per mile, both in 2010 and 2040. The next is the Wesley Chapel to USF to Tampa, West Shore, Gateway, St. Petersburg connection. Um, this uh, connection itself has been studied many times. It serves many activity centers. It serves a lot of the travel in our region. 
It has a great number of density of jobs and, and population within a half mile of the blue line of the connection itself. And it also does a great job of providing economic development opportunities and serves a number of different amenities. Again, here is the data and what put this connection in the top five, highlighted in yellow. The next is Clearwater, the gateway to St. Petersburg. This serve, has been studied many times. It serves a lot of activity centers and has a lot of opportunity for economic development. Again, here's the data associated with this connection. South Tampa to downtown Tampa, uh, fifth and final connection. Um, really, this one does a great job of serving a number of amenities along the corridor, as well as a great number of job density and population density within a half mile of the corridor. And again, here's the data associated with this connection. We're also looking at the PSTA, BRT connection from downtown St. Petersburg to, uh, to the beaches. Here's some data associated with the PSTA BRT and where it does well. To ensure the top five connections not only compete effectively for federal funds, we need to ensure that it also serves the Tampa Bay region. We do that by looking at how the top connections and the vision network serve today and tomorrow's jobs and residents. When we look at the blue lines only, we can see that we're actually within a half mile of all those blue lines, we're actually serving three out of every 10 jobs in Tampa Bay by 2040. And we're serving almost 5,000 jobs average per mile along those blue lines. Really striking statistics for that service. Really pointing to you know, where people are moving, where the sort of center of our region is. Now, when we looked at those regional critical connections serving those blue lines, what we're doing now is we're expanding the service greatly, but when you take both the blue and the green lines of service, combine them together, now we're serving six out of 10 jobs in Tampa Bay by 2040, uh, more than half of the jobs within a half mile of this network. However, when we expand the service, we do lose some efficiencies where you can see the drop per mile from the 4,900 to the 2,100 per mile. When looking at population, the top five connections serves two out of every 10 residents by 2040 and approximately 4,800 residents per mile. Again, adding the green with the blue, adding that additional service throughout the region. Now we're actually going to serve half of all the residents in Tampa Bay by 2040 with both the blue and green lines. But again, we see a drop in some efficiencies going from the uh, 4,800 residents per mile to down to 3,000 residents per mile. An important criteria in the federal process is serving people who are dependent on transit. When we look at the vision network, both those top five connections and the green lines, we serve six of ten residents without cars by 2040. Coming back to that vision, that network, the fact is that the Regional Transit Feasibility Plan is going to continue to focus on those blue lines, finding that competitive project for the federal process. So next steps, we're going to be focusing on those transit modes, um, answering the what of our analysis. Now that we have a sense of the where and where those top five connections are, we're going to start talking about costs uh, of those projects, how easy it is to implement some of those connections, and begin the process of identifying ridership and the impact to mobility for our Tampa Bay. The most important thing to remember is that to build premium transit for Tampa Bay, it takes three things. The Regional Transit Feasibility Plan is focused on what is the project to be built, and it will be up to Tampa Bay as a whole to answer how it's funded and who owns and operates it.